get to start with a brand new tax year for those of us who are on the year-to-year -year basis. Maybe can do a better job managing next year than what we did this year. The older ones are looking there, shaking their heads. The younger ones are saying, difference between optimism and age. Did you get a thousand piece puzzle for Christmas? Have you ever gotten a thousand piece puzzle and you started putting that thing together? That's kind of one of those fun things to do. And those pieces are just so very, very tiny. And you search 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 and you find pieces that fit together and slowly but surely little parts of the, the puzzle start coming together. Several years ago, Susan was given a thousand-piece John Deere tractor puzzle, and she didn't want to put it together, so Mom and I did. And we worked on that thing, and we worked on that. We framed it. We still have it. We're not taking that dude apart, I can guarantee you. <laughs> and we got down to the last ten pieces, and they all fell in place really quick, only for us to observe we were three pieces short, three pieces gone. Now, we had a box. I had an X-Acto knife. I made those pieces, put them in there. I defy you to find where they are. <laughs> but when we finished that puzzle, I thought, man alive, this, this thing is ruined. Here we've gone to all of this work. This is, has been weeks of assembly, weeks of sitting there looking at those little pieces and trying to get them to fit together. And, and it's just not complete. It's just not complete. Last Christmas Eve, that was just a week ago in case you're interested, I was flipping channels waiting for my lump of coal to come. Some of you don't even know what that is. Man alive, what is wrong with this world? Flipping channels, and it came upon the Christmas Eve service that was had at the Methodist Church in Dallas. And I got attracted to the story that Dr. Fielding was telling about being a little boy. And he had asked for this automobile dashboard. And it had blinkers. And when you turned on the key, it made a roar like the engine was starting. He said, here, it was the perfect play toy. And I wanted it so badly, and I opened it up, and there it was. And I was just so very, very excited. And he says he put the key in the ignition, and he twisted the key, and nothing happened. Perfect gift, but it wouldn't respond. He flipped the blinkers, it wouldn't do anything. He honked the horn, it didn't honk. He looks up in absolute panic at his mother and father and he says, what's wrong here? And his dad picks up the box. And there are those fateful words that the parents had overlooked. Batteries not included. He said, I got a whole new definition for the word eternity. The word eternity is defined as the time that you discover that the batteries are not included. For dad to run to 7-Eleven and see if they have the batteries and get them back and put them in place. And all of a sudden, everything was working. Now, I quit listening about that point because I grabbed my pen and my paper and I started writing that illustration down because I thought, wow, what a spiritual application we have here. And as we start the new year, one of the problems that a lot of people who have been in Christ for a long, long time may be experiencing is that they're getting all of the actions right. They've got all of the pieces of the puzzle laying there except for three. Or they have assembled the perfect toy, and they've assembled all of the parts, they think things are ready to go, and then they look on the box and they discover batteries not included. 
And if you do not go to the source and put the power source in place, no matter what it is you're trying to do, you're going to be in trouble spiritually. Well, as I thought about this concept, I thought of several different passages of Scripture that that talk about the importance of us having the right spiritual pieces of the puzzle in place, the batteries included and put in in the right direction so that they'll work. And I thought, you know, we really need to do some analysis and ask ourselves, do, do I have the batteries in place? Am I spiritually equipped to be what God calls me through His gospel to be? Or am I going through these spiritual motions and I'm wondering why things aren't happening? Wondering why my heart is is not full. Wondering why my spirit languishes. After all, I've done all of these right things. The only problem is I put the key in the ignition and because the batteries have not been installed, the dashboard doesn't whir like a car. The horn doesn't honk. The directional signals don't work. I'm sure the Apostle Paul knew nothing about batteries when he wrote these words that were read for you by Cameron a few moments ago from Colossians chapter 1. But man alive, as he talks about these things, he says, here's here's the batteries that you need in your spiritual life. If you're going to be successful in becoming what Jesus wants you to be. Verse 9, the first set of batteries that you need is a good working knowledge. A good working knowledge. Knowledge is not an end within itself. Knowledge is just the information that you need. It's the fortification that you need so that you can become what God wants you to be. One of the things that bothers me is that we're always saying, help us to study your word more, Father. And that's the end of our sentence. Wrong. Father, help me to study more so that I can learn your will, so that I can do your will, so that I can accomplish your task in this life. A lot of people are spiritually inept because of the simple fact that they have read and they have studied and they have memorized and that's as far as it's ever gone. Included. Listen here carefully to verse 9. We have not ceased to pray for you, Paul says, And to ask that you be filled with the knowledge of his will. How? In all spiritual wisdom and understanding. He's saying you're going to take that message that you have. And you're going to incorporate it into your life. And you're going to act it out on Monday through Saturday. That which you have been instilled with on Sunday. In other words, Christ is going to have to live within you powerfully. Because the batteries are included. When I was in the first grade, I wondered why in the world I had to spend so much time learning one plus one is two, two plus two is four, four plus four is whatever that is. What's this got to do with plane? What's this got to do with tag out on the playground? What's this got to do with anything in life? And now that I'm an older man, I understand. Wow, if you don't know that one plus one is four plus four is eight, and et cetera, and so forth, you're in trouble. You can't function in this world. You, you, you can't make life work for you very well. If you can't read, you can't make life work for you very well. If you don't know God and underlying current spiritual wisdom and knowledge. You cannot function as God wants you to function. I think often of the words of the Apostle Paul in Philippians chapter 3. Because Paul has talked in the first part of that chapter about his honor roll, how how his badge of courage was there, and he gave them all up. Verse 7 and 8, he says, "I, I have forsaken the knowledge of all of these worldly things and all of this worldly information for the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus. And in verse 10, he says most clearly, that I may know 
him. And the reason he says that is because he wants to be conformed to the likeness of Christ in his actions, in the way in which he lives his life. If you've ever gone through a spiritual drought, you know that one of the problems is probably because you have alienated yourselves from the source of power that gives you the ability to have spiritual wet times. When you're dry in your heart and dry in your emotions and dry in your spirit, you've cut yourself off from the source. Are the batteries included? They really need to be. As I look at this religious world in which we live, the, the, the things that are said, I, I'm amazed at how people will take a quasi-look at the Bible a verse here, a verse here, a concept here, a concept there. They really, really won't spend time with the whole counsel of God. And you and I, if we want to have the batteries included, we've got to spend time with the whole counsel of God. And not just have a superficial look at Jesus or His Word or His message, but look at the message that empowers life on a day-to-day -day basis. 1 John chapter 2 and verse 3, the great writer says, By this we know that we have come to know him if we keep his commandments. What is he saying to us? That we've just got to be involved in the thou shalt and the thou shalt not world? Or is he saying to us, we respond? to the Lordship of Jesus Christ in our lives because we know. Because we know Him. Second set of batteries that Paul talks about, verse 10. So that you will walk in a manner worthy of the Lord, to please Him in all respects, bearing fruit. That you will walk in a manner which pleases the Lord. One of the things that, that, that concerns me about myself every now and then is, is that I'll get up and I'll preach on Sunday and, and, and I'll, I'll project all these platitudes and Satan will attack on Monday. And I find that that's where the challenge is, to walk like a Christian ought to walk on Monday and then Tuesday and then Wednesday and then Thursday and Friday. Are you really walking as Christ has asked you to walk? Are you really making the determination that, that every single day I'm going to let Christ be reflected in my heart, my life, my spirit, in my words and in my actions? It's been some years ago that I had the opportunity to study with a young man and, and, and I... I thought this was just going to be wonderful because he, he had, had gotten out of college and, and was kind of in the search mode, or at least I thought he was. And, and we sat down and we began to discuss things of a spiritual nature. Thought we were going to make some great progress and all of a sudden he just exploded on me. And I thought, what in the world? Well, why has he gotten so angry? And he began to talk about you people. You people, he was referring to members of the churches of Christ. You people are hypocrites. Sat there and listened to him for a little while and I says, you know, really I don't understand what, where you're coming from and what's happening here, but could you explain to me where you come up with that idea? And he said, well, I had a college roommate. Ah. He said, my college roommate would go out on Friday night and Saturday night and he would drink and he would carouse and he would do all of the things that are evil and all of the things that are ungodly. But boy, Sunday morning, as soon as it was time for him to get up and be in Bible class, he was there because we need to be in Bible class. And he went to worship and he said, man, you got to do it just like we do it. Well, there's no question about that. We ought to be in Bible class. There's no question that we ought to worship God in spirit and in truth. But what was the problem? 
The problem was that Friday night and that Saturday night when he was living like Satan. And this young man didn't want any part of a religion that would project that sort of image. What about your life? Do people see you Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday living for Jesus like you worship on Sunday? You see, sometimes the power is not in our lives. The power is not working in our hearts because that battery has not been included and we haven't bought it. We haven't made the determination that we're going to worship God in spirit and truth on Sunday and then we're going to live for Him Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday. Worship on some is limited in power and spiritual ability unless we determine that our Christian walk is going to be 24-7, 365. Listen to these verses. Colossians chapter 4, verse 5. Conduct yourselves with wisdom toward outsiders, making the most of the opportunity. Romans chapter 6 and verse 4. Therefore we have been buried with him through baptism into death, so that as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, so we too might walk, how? In newness of life. Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 15. Therefore be careful how you walk, not as unwise men, but as wise. Only conduct yourselves in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ, Philippians 1.27. Daily walk. Knowledge, spiritual wisdom, and understanding. Daily walk. Walk in a manner pleasing to Him. Battery number three, verse 12. Giving thanks to the Father. Gratitude toward God for all that He has done and all that He is doing. One of the things that makes us powerful illustrations to a world that many times questions whether or not God really is and whether God really does what God claims He does is whether or not we are projecting a positive attitude about God and God's blessings toward us. I said to several this morning, when they said Happy New Year to me, I said, what's different? I woke up yesterday morning, my body hurt. I woke up this morning, guess what? My body hurt. Can't see much difference. If you dwell on those things, you're going to become very, very negative, pessimistic. But if you will do just the opposite and say, man, isn't it great? I can feel that I'm here. I hurt all over. God's with me. What a difference that makes. Things aren't going your way at work. You can gripe and complain about all of those things, but really, if you want to, you ought to say, well, I'm just glad I've got a job. Man, isn't it wonderful that we get to work for a company that today is still in business? We don't know about tomorrow, but today it's still in business. Man, I'm glad to be a part of a church that, that cares and loves and is concerned about one another and that, that the people there are really friendly and they like to talk to each other. Tiffany has to wait a lot of times for a lot of people to clear the auditorium so she can turn the lights out. That's good. That's good. Are we a thankful people? Are we thankful in heart? Are we thankful for the blessings that we have? I, I, I was sitting there last Sunday afternoon as, as the little kids were <coughs> opening up their stuff. And by the way, the parents were smart enough to buy extra batteries. Loved it. And I was thinking, wow, look how much stuff we've got here. How many
many things are there. I can remember some Christmases that weren't so prolific when I was a child. Man, we live in such an age of prosperity. Multiple gifts. Sometimes multiple, multiple gifts. Are we thankful? Are we thankful? We ought to be. Did you know that the poorest folks in the United States of America, and I I was told this recently, so I went and checked it on the internet. It must be true. (laughs) The poorest folks in the United States of America are among the 8% of the wealthiest in the world. Does that blow your mind? Thankful. Be ye thankful. Notice what the scripture has to say. Colossians chapter 3 verse 17. Whatever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks through him to God the Father. Well, Paul, what's your fourth battery? Salvation. Listen to verse 13 and 14. For he rescued us from the domain of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved Son in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. Salvation. Salvation. One of the things that concerns me the most about what is taught in our general religious climate and the the world that we live in today is that all you have to do is believe. And there's no other response necessary. If you'll just believe and if you'll just, quote, accept Jesus into your heart, you're okay. You've got it. I've read my Bible through and through time and time again and I haven't ever found that. It makes it simple. I wish that were the case. But I find that God has extended His grace to us and said to us, for you to be a receptor of my grace, there are some things I want you to be responsive to. There are some things that I want you to open your heart and your mind to. There are some things that I want you to participate in. And these things all have deep spiritual significance. They're not just quasi things that that are rituals to go through. These are things that really put the batteries into the salvation. I was visiting with a friend some time ago and he was telling me about a conversation he had had with a a person in a study recently. and, And that person was saying, oh, I've been a believer for many, many years. I just don't see God working in my life very well. And they began to analyze why is this so? Why is this happening? And he said, well, let's do a spiritual inventory. Why don't we talk uh, about the things that you should have done in your life that will make you have that covenant close relationship? And the fellow hadn't done any of them. He just, one night when a friend said, you better accept Jesus, said, okay, I accept Jesus. That was all there was to it. But there's a transformation, Paul says here, that goes on when we find ourselves going into the kingdom. It's a transformation that takes us out of the domain of darkness and translates us into the kingdom of light. And because we've gone out of darkness and into the kingdom of light, we have the understanding that we have been bought by God back to Him, away from sin and the consequences of sin. And we are given the forgiveness of our sins. As I was thinking about this point, I thought about one of the reasons why a lot of folks are spiritually adrift, though they claim belief in Jesus. 
but they've never been immersed into Jesus for the forgiveness of their sins. And other than the fact that that's what the scriptures tell us that we are to do and what we are to do, of what significance is it? And it dawned on me, I suppose I've known this, I suppose I've preached it, but it just kind of new and afresh came into my mind. Acts chapter 2 and verse 38 says, this is the way that you received the gift of the Holy Spirit. Hmm. If you've not been immersed into Jesus, you aren't empowered. If you've not been immersed into Jesus, you haven't been given the gift of the Spirit. Listen to what it says. Peter speaking. Repent and each of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. You say, well, what's the significance of that gift? Listen to Ephesians chapter 1 verse 13. In him you also, after listening to the message of truth, the gospel of your salvation, having also believed, were sealed in him with the Holy Spirit of promise. God's guarantee. Chapter 4 of Ephesians verse 30. Do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God. Why? Because you were redeemed and sealed for the day of redemption by that Holy Spirit. You see, it may be a fact in your life that you're not really getting the most out of the dashboard because you don't have all the batteries in place. And if the batteries aren't there, and there's a much longer list that we could share with you. If the batteries aren't there, you're not going to be empowered. You're not going to have the gifts that God gives to you. It's going to be a long struggle. You see, I want every man to have the batteries included spiritually so they can walk with Christ and walk as Christ asks them to walk. And they can become what Jesus wants them to be. And in the end result, when this life is over and there really is nothing left because we've left it all behind, we're able to hear, well done, good and faithful servant. Enter into the joys of the Lord. That's what I want to hear. Some of the most beautiful words in all of the Bible are found in Romans chapter 6. I love the whole chapter, but I share with you just these three verses from verse 4 through verse 6. Therefore we have been buried with him through baptism into death, so that as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we might walk in newness of life. For if we become united with him in the likeness of his death, certainly we shall also be in the likeness of his resurrection, knowing this, that our old self was crucified with him in order that our body of sin might be done away with so that we would no longer be slaves to sin. For he who has died is freed from sin. All the batteries are included in this book. The question is, have you made use of all of the batteries that are at your disposal so that you can truly be walking in newness of life? How fortunate that the first day of the year is the first day of the week, the Lord's Day, we're able to be assembled Maybe as you have been sitting there, hopefully I've spurned some thoughts in your mind. Maybe the message of God is making a difference in you and it's saying you need to, to get a better start on the year and get some of the batteries included in your life. Maybe, maybe a response to the invitation that we offer would be helpful. Maybe as you respond to the invitation of Christ, you ask for the prayers of your brothers and sisters and, and you find yourself empowered to begin this search to make sure that you're seeking to use the batteries God has given to us. Maybe you've got a struggle in your life, a difficulty that's there. 
Prayers by your brothers and sisters would help you to, to win the battle. Maybe you've never become Christ. You may have been a believer for many, 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 many years, but you've never been immersed into him for the forgiveness of your sins so that you can be raised, as we just read, to walk in newness of life. There's power there. If we can assist you this morning as we extend the invitation of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we want to, to give you that privilege, that opportunity to be responsive. We're going to sing this song. We're going to encourage one another. And if you need to respond this morning, would you come while together we stand and while we sing?